Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. In today's video, I will be focusing on the beautiful country of Australia. As Australia has been separated from the rest of the world for around 180 million years, it has some very unique creatures that can't be found anywhere else in the world. Australia's unique ecosystem is also a very vulnerable ecosystem, as many of Australia's native animals are now threatened, with one of the main factors behind this being invasive species. Out of the many videos that I've already done on invasive species, I have covered some of the most problematic invasive species to be found in Australia. Australia, such as the cane toad, the feral cat, the climbing perch, the carp, and the mosquito fish. So in today's video I've tried to pick five completely different invasive species to be found in Australia. And for our first species we'll start off in North Africa and the Middle East, as we have the dromedary camel. These large mammals are masters of arid environments, normally being found in deserted or semi-deserted areas. These camels have a few adaptations to help them survive in these harsh conditions, as they store fat located in the humps on their backs. And during hard times the camels can metabolize this fat so it can be used for nutritional purposes. On this planet today there are two species of camel, and 90% of the world's camels are actually dromedary camels. The dromedary camel is also the largest of these species, reaching a maximum size of around 2 meters at the shoulder. The vast majority of dromedary camels are actually domesticated, with their thought to be around 13 million on the planet today. So how did this large, highly adapted mammal make its way over to Australia? Well, just like with many other invasive species in Australia, it was brought over with the colonizers, as they were originally introduced in 1840 from both British India and Afghanistan. These camels were to be used in transportation and construction, however these camels were released into the wild once motorised transport was available. This turned out to be a very costly mistake and the effects are still seen today. In 2008 there are thought to be around 1 million feral camels and this population had the capability of doubling every 8 to 10 years. In 2013 the number was brought down to around 600,000 because of large scale culling operations. Before the introduction of these camels the largest mammal in Australia was the red kangaroo, so it really was no surprise that these camels had a huge effect on the ecosystem. These camels were known to ingest more than 80% of the plant species available, some of which were threatened species. They are also known to compete with native plant eating creatures, and have been known to foul water holes, and in some of the more remote parts of Australia, this can have a huge knock-on effect to other animals. This feral camel population still remains a problem today, as the recent bushfires in Australia brought these camels into urbanised areas, as they damage buildings and infrastructure structure in their search for water, and even though it's not really their fault, these camels are a big problem invasive species. But for our next species we'll be heading to the fresh waters of North America, as we have the rainbow trout. Now when it comes to invasive fish in Australia, there really is a lot to choose from. But the rainbow trout isn't just one of the worst invasive fish in Australia, but it's one of the worst invasive fish in the world, as they're included in the list of the top 100 globally invasive species, and have led to the endangerment and extinction of many other species of fish. In their native waters, adult rainbow trout are most mostly predators, feeding on aquatic invertebrates, crustaceans and other fish. And on this diet they're thought to reach a maximum size of around a metre, or around 40 inches long. Although they're one of the worst invasive fish in the world, they're also one of the most loved, as they're a very popular sport fish, and they're also a very popular food fish. This popularity is the reason why they've been introduced into so many countries in the world, and in most places have completely taken over. And it isn't just the rainbow trout that now calls Australia home, as the brown trout is another welcome yet unwelcome invader. Rainbow trout were originally introduced into Western Australia in 1927. This was to provide recreational fishing to the southwest part of the state. This introduction initially failed before a hatchery was set up in the area. This introduction pleased many of the colonists as it made the fishing a lot more interesting, but this introduction proved to have negative effects on the freshwater ecosystems as they not only compete with Australia's native fish but also transmit disease as they've been linked to decreases in the species in the Murray cod family and also to native crustacean and amphibian numbers. But because of their popularity in the fishing industry, this still remains to be a very controversial invasive species. But for our next species, we'll be heading up to the northern hemisphere, as we have the red fox. There's a reason why this small predator can be found almost anywhere across the northern hemisphere, and that's because it's one of the most adaptable and intelligent predators in the world, as they're commonly found in desert, wetland, and grassland areas, and even do very well in urbanised environments. And I can personally say that fox calls keep me up every week, as it really sounds like someone's in pain.
Red foxes will prey on almost anything that they can get their paws on. In the wild, this mainly consists of small mammals, birds, and fruit. But 18% of urban foxes' diet is made up of household leftovers, which just goes to show they can adapt to almost any environment. The red fox was first introduced into Australia in around 1855. This was for their use in recreational hunting, as their pelts were highly sought after and very colourful. As there are not many large native mammalian predators in Australia, it's no surprise that this highly adapted predator soon took over and caused massive damages to the ecosystem. Many native ground nesting birds suffered, as well as land nesting reptiles such as the green turtles. But it wasn't just the native animals that suffered, as there was a significant economic loss due to farmers losing their livestock. In 2012, it was estimated that there were more than 7.2 million red foxes in Australia, and this number could yet increase. So this small adaptive predator has proven to be one of the worst invasive species in Australia. But for our next species, we'll be heading to the fresh waters of Eurasia, as we have the smooth newt. Now this species is normally found in relatively small water sources, normally around woodland areas. Surprisingly enough, this species can also be found in my back garden, and I filmed a few of them that I found last year. Throughout their life cycle, they live two completely different lives, one in water and one out of the water. A smooth newts live on land most of the year, and even hibernate under logs or in burrows. As soon as spring comes around, they enter the water, where it becomes time to breed. While they're on land, they tend to eat insects, caterpillars, worms, and slugs, but in the water, they switch to crustaceans, mollusks, and tadpoles. And on this diet, they can reach maximum size of around 11 centimeters or 4.3 inches. This small amphibian found its way to Australia through the pet trade, as up until 1997, it was legal to buy and own this species. But as I've covered many times on this channel before, once people are allowed to keep a certain species, it normally means that some people are going to release them into the wild. In 2010, a single smooth newt was found in a pool of water at a Melbourne building site. This was especially alarming, as it was the first time an entirely new amphibian order had been recorded outside of captivity in Australia. The smooth newt is an amphibian in the family of salamanders and newts, and although they're native to large parts of Europe and Asia, there are no native newt and salamander species in Australia. As this discovery is still relatively recent, we yet to see the full impacts of this species on the Australian ecosystem, but the main fears are that they will compete with native species and even prey on their young, so time will tell how much of a problem this species really is. Before our final species, we'll make this short trip over to Southeast Asia, as we have the water buffalo. Water buffalo are very aptly named, as they do very well in swampy wetland areas. Because of their impressive abilities in the water, it's thought that they were domesticated around 6,300 years ago. This was mainly to help cultivate water-loving plants such as rice, and also to provide milk and food. Because of their effective use in farming, they've been given a nickname the Living Tractor of the Yeast. These water buffalo are some of the largest bovine animals, reaching weights of around 1,200 kilograms, or around 2,650 pounds. And wild water buffalo get to this size by feeding on aquatic plants. Because of their impressive uses in farming, they were introduced into Australia in 1829 from Indonesia. By the early 1960s, their population was thought to number around 200,000. These large mammals are known to cause significant damage to wetland ecosystems by trampling native wetland plants and also contributing to soil erosion. The only two predators in Australia that are able to take out a water buffalo are both humans and crocodiles. Because of this, feral populations have been able to multiply and spread pretty quickly, and even though thousands are exported to Southeast Asia each year, the feral population still seems to be increasing each year. So although there are loved biological tractor in many parts of the world, they are still causing a problem in Australia. But that's about it for this video. If you have any other suggestions, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.